Relighting is one of the most interesting ways of combining Nuke's 2D and 3D systems, and if it's used sparingly, it can get you excellent results when you can't get that extra information directly from a 3D department. In this video, I want to cover the new Relighting Setup Toolkit that ships as of Nuke 11 and explain exactly how you can use the Relight node and the Position to Points node to help you set up your relighting scene. So I'm going to start by just extending this over slightly to give us a little bit more room here on the right hand side. Now I'm going to take a look at the inputs to this relighting setup. On the left hand side we have our multi-pass data which is coming in from our 3D renderer. Now if we take a look at the layers that are involved in that, uh, in that multi-pass EXR just by bringing in a layer contact sheet I can view that, I'm going to show layer names and center you can see that there are three layers inside of this multi-pass image. We have our RGBA, our diffuse pass, our beauty pass. We also have a normals pass and a position pass, where every pixel in the image represents the coordinates of that point on the geometry in 3D space. Now these are the minimum amount of passes that you need in order to do the relighting setup inside of Nuke. You always need the RGBA, you need a normals pass and a position pass. So that is our multi-pass data up there on the left hand side. On the right we also have the camera that was used to render out this image and it's important to have both when doing relighting inside of Nuke. Now inside of the relight setup itself there are these two sections we have 3D and then 2D. Inside of the 3D section we're doing a couple of different things. We're first of all adding in a 3D preview of our scene so it becomes easier to add in and position our lights which sit here in the middle. Over on the right hand side we're setting up a material and actually doing the relight itself. And then down here in the 2D section we're merging that new lighting information over the original plate which is coming in from the left. So let's just work top to bottom and take a look at exactly how this works. The first thing I'll take a look at is the 3D preview and light sections of our toolset. So I'll just zoom in on those slightly. Now our 3D preview provides a useful way of positioning our lights with respect to the geometry that we're trying to relight. And to do that, we use our position to points node, as you can see here. Now the position to points node takes two inputs, a position pass and a color pass. So just above it, I've separated those two out from our multi-pass EXR using two of Nuke's shuffle nodes. Now it's important to know that when you use this on your scenes, you'll need to make sure that the in channel on the shuffle node points to the correct channel in your multi-pass EXR image. Now underneath the position to points node you can see that I'm plugging it in to a preview scene node that also accepts an input from this lights backdrop. Now inside of here is where we're going to put all of the lights that represent the extra lighting information we're adding to our scene. And in my case you can see I've added in these two point lights. So let's just view this preview scene over here on the left hand side. Now as you can see there are a couple of things in Nuke's 3D space. First of all we have a representation of the geometry that we're relighting. And secondly, we have these two extra point lights. Point light one is this blue light, which is quite close to the geometry. And point light two is this greenish yellow light, a little bit further away from it. So with this 3D preview in Nuke's 3D space, it becomes a little bit more easy for us to come in and position these lights to ensure that we're relighting the parts of the image we actually want to affect. And once we have those in the correct position, we can switch from our 3D preview over to the actual relight part of this process. So let's start by taking a look at the relight node itself. As you can see, it takes in four inputs. So let's just move around them one by one. On the left hand side, we have the lights input, which is connected to our light scene used for the 3D preview that we can see over here in Nuke's 3D viewport. This importantly means that the lights will be placed in exactly the same position as we set up a second ago in our 3D preview. The next input on the relight node is the color. And this is taking in the diffuse or RGBA pass from our original multi-pass EXR. The next input across is the material input. Now at the moment I have one of Nuke's Fong materials connected here and adjusting its settings will adjust how the light will propagate over the surface of the geometry. Although you could of course use any of the other Nuke materials available to you over here in the shader section. Finally on the right hand side we have our cam coming in from the very top of the toolset. So with that in mind let's select our relight node and hit 1 to view the results. What we're now seeing on screen is lighting information generated entirely inside of Nuke based upon the position of our point lights, our material settings and our original data coming from the renderer. If we were to go into any of these point lights and change their settings or positions all of this would update in real time. 
So here you can see I'm changing the position of our light, I could change its intensity, I could change its colour as well to ensure that this is exactly as I want it to be. And when we're happy with the colours and positions, we can move on down into the 2D section of our toolset. That is the section where we merge this brand new lighting information over our original background. As you can see, if I just view this merge here and hit 1, we've added this extra lighting information on top of our original render. So if I just select my merge and hit D, you can see before, straight from the renderer, and after, once we've added in our extra lighting information. So that's a quick look at the Relighting Setup Toolkit inside of Nuke. Now whilst this information is always going to be slightly better coming from a dedicated 3D application out of a dedicated renderer, if you have access to a multi-pass EXR containing positions, normal and diffuse data, and a camera for the scene, you can generate brand new lighting information directly inside of Nuke itself.